This is my Gold Shell Mini Doge Box Miner, and it broke. I think it overheated or something, just stopped hashing. I couldn't get to the IP address, but with the help of a fellow crypto miner and some posts on Reddit, I was able to get this thing up and hashing again. And today, I'm going to show you how I did it. I'm gonna leave timestamps in the description as well as the timeline down below. So if you wanna skip ahead to any parts, go for it. I got this from the Mining King. Big shout out, thank you for the trade. Traded him a server I had laying around. And I put it solo mining Dogecoin on solar power. So it was completely off grid. Just my sweet little lottery ticket, right? And you know, every couple of days, I will check the pool and see if I happen to hit a Dogecoin block. A couple of weeks ago, I checked the pool and it wasn't mining. So I figured I'd go out there and have to reset the power. You know, that happens. I reset the power, didn't come back on, didn't get the IP address, nothing. All I had was a bright red light next to the power plug on the appliance. I brought this up on a live stream recently. We took it apart, physically inspected it. Nothing was burned or damaged in any way other than my ego for having to break the warranty seal, but that's beside the point. So after the live stream, a fellow crypto miner, UK Miners Club, reached out to me and sent me a link to a Reddit post where somebody else had a similar issue. So of course, I'm going down this rabbit hole and looking into it and essentially what it comes down to is this guy explained how to reflash a factory image back onto the box miner and then from there you're able to get into the console and update upgrade you know do all the things so even though i've already got this repaired i'm going to go ahead and go through this walkthrough again with you so what you're going to need of course is your asic that's kind of an important part you're also going to need a micro SD card. This one is uh, just an 8 gig SD card that I pulled out of one of the 3D printers. It is not a um, name brand of any kind. It's Netac, N-E-T-A-C. So definitely not a Samsung or SanDisk or anything like that. And then of course you're going to need an SD card reader. If you don't have one built in, you can get a cheap one on Amazon for like 10 bucks. I will leave links for all of these sites in the description down below as well. So this Reddit post, going through and reading it, this guy, EK Miner, from a year ago, had a similar situation, gave links to uh, Mini Doge version 2.1.1 pre-built image, an IMG file. He also gives links to a program called IBSMK, which is very much in Chinese, and when you open it, it actually just looks like Etcher, like Bellina Etcher, if you've ever used that. I'll get to that. So I downloaded this file, and it again, it's a pre-built image file from the Gold Shell firmware. Think about it as the operating system for the ASIC machine. So what do you do next? Well, you take your SD card, plug it into your SD card reader, and you're going to open Etcher, Bellina Etcher. Uh, make sure that you've got the correct SD card or storage device selected. Flash from file. Find the file that you downloaded. Uh, the download is going to be a zip file. You'll unzip it, and within that within that zip file is the image. Uh, so you're going to open that, and then just hit flash. You'll get a warning that says, "Are you sure you want to do this?" Click OK if you're sure you want to do this. It's going to go through format the SD card. So anything that you have on there is going to be erased. It's then going to burn the image as a bootable image on the SD card. Uh, it shouldn't take very long. It's not a very big file. Then it's going to go through and validate that the image was burned correctly and no errors popped up or nothing got corrupted and it's completed. So we'll close that, remove our SD card, so first, we're gonna go ahead and insert the SD card. We're gonna go plug in our ethernet and our power and watch it boot up. Essentially, we plug in the SD card, you know, give it power and everything. Give it a couple of minutes. It's gonna go through its paces and ramp up and everything. And what it's doing now is loading that image onto the device itself. 
Now, nowhere in any of the instructions does it say how long this is supposed to take. I let it sit for about five to 10 minutes just so, to make sure everything loaded and updated correctly. So while it's doing its thing, Let's take a closer look at this article. Um, so in addition to this, what you're going to want to get is the newest, latest, greatest firmware for your mini doge miner, which you can get from the gold shell miner GitHub repo under firmware. They've got a big old list of all of their ASICs and the newest firmwares are available for them. And it's super simple. Just click it and then hit download over here. Now, since I've already got that, I don't need to download it again. But while looking into this, I also found this article, Goldshell Box ASIC Miner Firmware Recovery Guide from October of 2022. Kind of goes through and talks about some of the Goldshell miners, the hardware requirements that you're gonna need, like we just went over. It kind of goes through all of this stuff. Now, okay, obviously you're gonna grab the Mini Doge recovery image for one of the shared links we have, which there's also the link for the HS box and the ST box. Uh, additional documentation, official gold, fill vi gold shell video and tutorial doc. This is an interesting note that I found, but wait, I don't have a Mini Doge, you might say. Well, fortunately the Mini Doge version seems to at least boot up enough to flash the real box firmware. All we're going to use it to do is to get the box to boot up again so we can flash the correct firmware on it. I haven't tried this because none of my other boxes have failed yet. Uh, when they do fail, inevitably, I am going to try this method on those as well. But let me know if you have tried this, if you know if this actually works to recover a box miner other than the Mini Doge using the Mini Doge OS image. If you have found anything so far in this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Hit that like button. It would really mean a lot to me. I appreciate it. All right, let's go back and see if we are done flashing our mini doge miner. So you can see I powered it down, removed the SD card, powered it back up. Let's see what it does. Let me see if I can get a better view of this because you can't really see the activity light at the top of the miner in the, in the portrait it's in. That's a little bit better of a shot. Now we can see the activity light and the power light. Now you're gonna wanna use something like Angry IP Scanner or log directly into your router or your firewall, whatever's handing out DHCP and find the IP address that was assigned to this machine once it touched your network. We've, we've done our IP scan with Angry IP Scanner. Now we can sort by host name and find uh, the most recent IP address. In this case, it's 192.168.254.139. a That's gonna take us to, here we are, our mini Doge Miner. We'll that's English and we'll unlock it with our default password of 12345678. Super secure. We'll go down here to Miner. I'm sorry, system. First things first, so we're going to update the firmware with 2.2.5, which is the most recent version at the time of recording. This is gonna be that version that you downloaded earlier. So you'll, as you saw, you'll click on Clippy and pick the firmware and then hit update. It's gonna take a couple of minutes to load. Now, as it's doing this process, you can hear the miner boot up and, and kind of, you know, fans spin up and it's doing its thing. So it, that's normal, it's supposed to do that. When it's all said and done, what I like to do is go back here to system and hit restart miner. It's like a fresh reboot after doing an update, like a Windows update. Now when it's all said and done and you can hear the machine kind of ramp back down, um, when you're on your IP address, hit the refresh and you can see here we're on our newest version of uh, firmware. It's gonna say it's unlocked up here. It's not unlocked. Go ahead and lock it and then click unlock again. Put in your super secure password of 12345678. Come down here to, nope, to minor. And we're going to add our pool settings here. So add, and you can put whatever pool you like. So for me, in coin miners, 
Uh, so we're gonna go over here to get started. Scroll down to Dogecoin somewhere. Here we are, Dogecoin, we're in America. And this second column here is solo mining. The first column is pool mining. So it's got a different stratum port if you're gonna be solo over pool. We're going to right click and copy the link address. Go back to here, just hit paste on URL. Then you're going to take your Dogecoin wallet address, drop it in here, and uh, then you'll put a period. So dot and then the name of whatever you want your ASIC to be. So mine is goat mini doge and password is just X. Hit apply. See, that's why I said you need to unlock it first, but apparently that didn't work either. Give it a couple of minutes. We can see when this little shovel icon here goes from gray to green, it's been accepted. And look at that, our, the light, the power light on the machine is gone green and our activity light is blinking. You can go in here and enable, you know, red and green LED, which is actually blue and red and blue on, on this model, the older model. And that's it. That's how I reflashed my mini doge miner. Thanks a lot to UK Miners Club. You can find them on YouTube. Um, I'll leave a link as well down below. Go subscribe, check it out. So again, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Help push it out with that YouTube algorithm and stuff. If this is the kind of content that you like, consider subscribing to the channel. And of course, thanks for watching.